good morning to all of you. I hope you can open your cameras so that our participants may meet you. I would like to welcome all to this webinar about living and working in Sweden. I'm Susana Paes. I work for Ares Portugal, which operates within the EFP, the Public Employment Service in Portugal. And first of all, and more important, I want to thank our colleagues from Ares Sweden for organizing this webinar together with us. We have Orne, Gloria, Anders, Miguel, Peter, Janet, Anika, and Rob today with us to help us know a little bit better about this beautiful country. So thank you so much for joining us. We also have Carmen and Andrea from Eris Portugal together with me to help our colleague. These are the rules for this morning. Now I would just like to briefly present the Eris network because many of you may not know it and it's because the Eris network exists that we are here today with you. So Eris is a network where European Employment Services cooperate and our mission, our objective is to facilitate the free movement of workers within the European Union and also the European Economic Area. This includes 27 member states, Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein and Switzerland. We provide free of charge services both to job seekers and to employers, whether it's information, advice, or support to recruitment. And in order to provide those services, we have a network of areas advisors that are experts in mobility. In Portugal, we have around 35 areas advisors. They are spread all over the country. And all over Europe, you have more than 1,000 areas advisors ready to support you in your career move. We also have an ARES portal where you can find on a daily basis more than 3 million job vacancies available in all sorts of occupations. There is also an online platform where we organize recruitment events. It's called European Job Day. And we also are available on the chat on Fridays and of course on social media, where you can follow all the activities we have planned for the near future. So thank you again for being here. And without further delay, I pass the floor to Arne for the presentation about Sweden. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Susanna. And uh, I will say hello, Portugal. Yeah, and uh, I will say it again. Hello, Portugal. And um, with uh, this view from the Swedish capital, Stockholm, we wish all of you warm welcome to this uh, webinar regarding living and working in Sweden. In the first part of the webinar, in the first part of the webinar, you will meet us, Gloria, Kunja Byström and me, myself, uh, Arne Arvidsson, and um, we will give you a general overview uh, of the labor market and what is good to know if you plan to go to Sweden. In the second part of the webinar, uh, you will meet all, all our fantastic colleagues uh, who will give you more specific information regarding job opportunities in uh, several sectors. Now we will go on uh, with uh, our presentation uh, about the labor market in Sweden. First of all, I will start this presentation, give you just some, and say some words and uh, give you a short overview of the demand of manpower in several sectors in Sweden. We at the Arbetsmiljön Juris are working especially with recruitment from other EU and EEA countries for the sectors you will see on this slide. But we do not only have demand in uh, these sectors. Example uh, of other qualified competences needed in Sweden are car mechanics, electricians, bus and truck drivers, etc. So here we are again. Thank you. Uh, I will go on and uh, be before we start the, the real presentation about the labor market, I will give you some general facts about Sweden. Uh, maybe some of you are, or have already been in Sweden, as you know, and as you can see from the map, Sweden is a long country from the north to the south, actually more than 1,500 kilometers. If you go in, this, in the opposite direction from this, the city of Malmö, as you can see in the south, uh, you will come down to Rome. So that gives you a picture of how long Sweden is. And actually, Sweden is the third largest country 
in the EU area. I think only Spain and France are a little bit bigger if you uh, look to the area. But we are not so many people living in Sweden. Actually, uh, just ten and a half million of inhabitants are living, and uh, most people, eighty-five percent of more of all people, are living in the southern part of Sweden. You see the capital of Stockholm and the and the uh, the third part th- south of Stockholm. That's where all uh, the, the most people are living, and also where where most job opportunities are. But of course, you will find also good job job opportunities in the northern part of of Sweden. And there is a lot going on, uh, I will say, uh, in the upper north. And I think think maybe Annika will come back to that later in uh, our webinar here. Yes, Um, Sweden is an EU member state uh, since many years ago, since 1995. Uh, but we still have uh, our own currency, uh, the Swedish krona, and um, 100 Swedish krona kronor uh, are approximately uh, 11 euro for the moment. But uh, it differs a lot, of of course, from from time to time. Um, we can also say something about the climate in in Sweden. Uh, uh, as we said, Sweden is a long country. Uh, and, it, and it can differ a lot, the weather uh, in the upper north, uh, if you compare it to, to the south. Uh, sometimes uh, this time of the year we have a winter. When I woke up this morning, I had 15 centimeters of snow outside my window. And I'm living uh, in the southwestern part of Sweden. Another year at the same date, it could be uh, 20 plus in Sweden. So it, it could differ a lot this time of the year. Um, but Sweden is a good country if you would like to go for uh, for skiing and so on. So uh, there are a, a lot, and there is a lot of space in the nature if you would like to go outside. Now, I, now I have been speaking a lot, and I think uh, I will let my let my colleague Gloria in to say something. Thank you for watching. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Arne. Well, I will uh, tell you something about workplace culture and Swedes in general terms. Um, so um, uh, work uh, organizations in Sweden in general are flat organizations, meaning that uh, they're comparing to other countries, the organization are less uh, hierarchic. And, and meaning that, uh, for example, um, this is in general terms, uh, decisions regarding an organization and uh, jobs issues, organization issues are taken near the employees. And um, many times in, um, uh, in cooperation with the, the um, um, uh, trade unions representatives, local trade unions representatives. Um, having a capacity of working team and it's important in the Swedish uh, workplace and uh, having the will to reach consensus agreement uh, is also important. And this is because in Sweden, in general, uh, Swedes tend to avoid conflict. Um, Swedish working places are much more informal than in other countries. I know because, it, for example, in Portugal, so uh, we don't use uh, titles. So for uh, forget about doutor. Uh, well, uh, instead, we use the first name uh, when we when we talk to our managers, for example, and your colleagues. Gender equality is important in Sweden and is regulated in the legislation. And in um, this content, uh, meaning means that uh, women and men um, should have the the same opportunities to. Uh, career, uh, career and salary development. Um, uh, strong and active trade unions. It's also very um, uh, typical in Sweden. We have uh, 
uh, about 90% of the employees in Sweden are covered by collective agreements. And uh, as I tell, as I told you before, um, especially in the bigger companies, there are local representatives. Um, coffee and coffee breaks. Well, some uh, coffee breaks are important in uh, Swedish work culture. Um, at the coffee breaks, you get to know your uh, better your um, uh, colleagues, and um, actually, um, uh, much uh, very much of informal information could be passed uh, can be passed at the coffee breaks. So, if you start working in Sweden, don't miss coffee breaks. Um, if you if we take a look at outside the working places in general, so you should be um, aware that um, if you visit somewhere at uh, their house, you should take your shoes off when you, you come to people's homes. Uh, and especially in the winter, uh, for example, me, when I go away, I always bring with me uh, in the winter um, shoes to, to change when when come to my, my uh, friend's home. Uh, as uh, as uh, Arne said before, um, the climate uh, differs a little bit uh, in the in the country um, from north to southern. Uh, and uh, uh, you should be aware that uh, in the summer we have uh, light summer nights. So we uh, and uh, up in the north you almost don't see, don't have night, don't see. And um, on the other hand, so we have uh, dark winters. Um, so uh, uh, I live in Uppsala in the middle part. Well, people living in the north they think. They found it is the south south part of Sweden, and here in Uppsala, well, we at in the winter in could be dark already uh, be, between two and three in the in the afternoon in the winter, for example. Um, well, uh, it was some uh, information about working pl workplace culture and Swedes. Please, and now 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 it's my time to. Uh, well, um, some information about working conditions in Sweden. Uh, the foundation in the Swedish model uh, means collective agreements between social partners. On one side, uh, strong trade unions, as I said before, and on the other side, employers' organizations. And... Um, there are different uh, negotiation coalitions for public and private sectors. Um, usually these collective agreements are for three years, but it can be shorter uh, if the parts agree on that. Um, According to standard working hours, uh, full time uh, is 40 hours per week and um, working hours act uh, rules about how many hours one may work per day, week and year. Uh, um, Over time is limited to 50 hours of a period of one month, but not more than 20 hours during a year. Um, a job in Sweden can be either a permanent or temporary position. Most permanent positions are preceded by a trial period of three or six months during which the employer can fire an employee at will. Once a position is permanent, uh, certain conditions must be met before an employer is allowed to fire an employee. Um, Swedish employers must provide the employee with a written contract within 30 days if he or she requests one. 
And we at the Euros Sweden, we encourage all employ employees to request a written contract from their employer. All workers in Sweden uh, have the right to at least five weeks of paid vacation per year. But it can be more uh, depend on where you are working, age, and for how long time you have been working. Unlike uh, many other countries, uh, Sweden has no minimum wage uh, law. Instead, uh, wages are set by collective agreements between employers and the unions. And therefore, uh, labor uh, we, unions can be a good source in information on salary levels in Sweden. Um, statistic is, uh, statistics on wages, on average salaries in Sweden by professions are available on Statistics Sweden's website. And my honor, could you please uh, write it down on chat? It will be great. Thank you. Um, let's talk about uh, taxes. Let's see. Um, let's see. I have my notes here. Uh, well, most people in Sweden uh, pays income tax um, and uh, the, munici the municipal tax uh, varies between 29 and 35 percent, but uh, you can also pay less than 29 percent, uh, but this is the average. Um, the average wage um, for the moment is uh, about uh, 3,300 euro a month gross. Well, it was working conditions in Sweden. Please, Arne, go on. Thank you, Gloria. Yes, uh, I will say uh, and give you some words about the labor market and, and what's going on. I think that could be a of big interest for all of you. Um, we can say that uh, among 70% of all manpower uh, are working in the, in the private sector uh, in, in Sweden. And maybe you know some Swedish brands uh, as Volvo, IKEA, Skanska, Spotify, uh, etc. So most people are working in uh, in those sectors, and uh, uh, there are a lot of interesting going uh, going on uh, with much developing in um, many in the industrial countries uh, and, and also in the engineering and in and in the ICT field. But of course, uh, the public sector is also a big employer. Uh, with many jobs uh, in the healthcare, uh, in the education field, and of course in, in preschools, and you will have more information on that uh, later on here in the in the in the webinar. Uh, also, not, of course, in the social care, uh, as police and fire services, uh, etc. Uh, if we have a look then at the labor market situation, uh, we can say it's quite good in Sweden. It's a little bit higher employment, uh, uh, unemployment, uh, I would say, than, than in our neighbor countries. But uh, for the moment, it's around 6.5%. Uh, and for the mo moment, mostly by young and low educated uh, people. Um, and we have some challenges uh, in the Swedish labor market. Uh, uh, especially about among youngsters, uh, the unemployment rate is a little bit higher, but it has also decreased since last year. Okay, we can go on, I think, and have a look at the shortages and surpluses uh, in Sweden. Um, we have a big demand for manpower in Sweden in uh, some sectors and branches. 
uh, teachers and preschool teachers, veterinarians, doctors, and different kind of nurses, of course, dentists are in demand. And as mentioned before, uh, engineers, qualified IT staff, uh, but also chefs are in big demand. For example, me and uh, one colleague of mine, uh, we went to Spain last week uh, to looking for chefs to go together with uh, Swedish employers. So there's a, there's a big demand for for chefs as well. And also, um, as mentioned already before, car, car mechanics, truck and bus drivers, uh, and some other uh, professions are also uh, in demand. But there are also surpluses. Um, uh, on the first hand side, I would say it's in the uh, in the culture and uh, media field, uh, journalists uh, as well. Uh, administrations, uh, administrators, uh, librarians, uh, and people who are working uh, with uh, HR are not so much in demands. Um, on the surplus list, we also have shop assistants and uh, cleaners and so, but there I will say um, there are not so big surplus plus is because it um, depends on a little bit uh, the time of the year. For example, the shop assistants uh, uh, are in big demand, for example, uh, before Christmas and, uh, and so on. So it, it differs a little bit uh, on the time of the year and where in Sweden also. Uh, I would say in, in the bigger cities, I think you will find Show, uh, jobs as shop assistants and cleaners uh, all year around. So back to you, Gloria. Thank you, Arne. Um, and now let's take a look on uh, how to find uh, the the jobs in Sweden. Um, the most uh, used way to find uh, jobs all over Sweden is having a look in the database of open vacancies um, in named Platzbanken, published by the Swedish Public Employment Services, and that you will find that the, the link uh, uh, Swedish Public Employment Service there. Um, uh, as well, it, it covers all the country and all the sectors. Um, uh, most job offers uh, in the data, in this database is of course written in Swedish, um, but with a translation tool online as Google Translate or other tool, it's easier to translate information in job offers to your language. Um, uh, we usually uh, uh, recommend, for example, if um, uh, to use uh, keywords, translate keywords from your uh, from your specific uh, skills uh, or education into Swedish, and you can uh, you can find for uh, job offers in your field in uh, the free search uh, file in the in the in this database. For example, if you translate it in, into Swedish. Uh, and then you have the ERAS uh, database, of course, uh, our own uh, uh, job bank for the ERAS network. And you, sh you should know that all the job offers registered on the Swedish Public Employment Services Platzbank and database, they are automatically transferred into the ERAS uh, database. Um, uh, there is also um, an, an, uh, another database that could be useful for English speaking professionals in Sweden and is uh, jobsinstockholm.com. Orne, could you please write it down on the chat? And uh, even if this uh, uh, web page uh, it's jobs in Stockholm. You can also look for jobs uh, offers in other in other cities, and then you write jobs in Gothenburg, for example, jobs in Malmo. Um, uh, there is there are also um, um, 
a lot of recruitment companies um, and these are also a good source of information on job offers in Sweden and um, you can use Google with the words bemanings for tox value to find recruitment companies. Um, social media, of course, it's a good way, uh, especially LinkedIn. Uh, it's uh, a widely used uh, tool uh, for employers to market their job offers. And, um, and we have daily and local newspaper containing job adverti advertisements and they are mostly advertised online. And at this link, you will find, um, you will be able to access this, this database. Another way is also to, uh, if you find a job offer uh, on, on the database, is that you contact the, the, the employer directly uh, that you wish to work for. Uh, it's, it's quite common. Uh, well, let's speak about uh, Swedish language. We we got uh, we get uh, quite uh, many questions about this. Is it possible to work in Sweden with only English? Well, um, uh, with exception of some sectors like uh, IT uh, and engineering, uh, hospitality. Uh, most jobs require fluency in in, in Swedish, uh, at least as uh, at a basic level. Um, so we strongly recommend if you are decided to come and work in Sweden, that you start learning the language uh, from Portugal already. Because really, um, even if Swedes uh, learn English at school and they do you uh, uh, speak quite well, so in a work situation, you are expected to be able to communicate in Swedish, with exceptions that I mentioned, IT and hospitality. And um, uh, you should also be aware that there are few jobs that uh, require a low or no formal education. Um, this link uh, for Folk Universität is um, a, um, a company, um, education company that offers uh, Swedish online courses that are quite good. Let's talk about um, how to apply for a, for a job in Sweden. An application to a Swedish uh, employer should consist of a CV and, uh, and a cover letter. You can use the CV format Europass. It, it hasn't been that common in Sweden, but I think they have seen more and more of, um, of the, the Europass actually. So we, it, it works here. Your CV should not um, uh, have more to than one page, um, or max two two uh, um, pages, and the cover letter should not be longer than one page. Um, uh, it's not necessary to send certificates or reference. You can do it later if the employer requested. You can bring it with you to the interview. And, and it's quite common to follow um, uh, the interview um, or after sending application uh, by with the phone call. It's quite common. Um, as I as and as I said before, you could also, uh, also contact directly the company or the employer you, you wish to work for, and try to do with it at professional rather than as a job seeker, trying to get information what was important for the the employer to know about from a candidate, for example. And uh, or other issues that you may think it's imp are important for you as an applicant. 
Um, well, there is, and then you, if you want to know more about uh, the job applications in a Swedish way, so please, um, you, we invite you to attend some webinars, uh, applying for a job in Sweden. You have the links here, and um, that uh, I believe you you appreciate it. They are very good. Please, Orne, go on. Yes, thank you. Cost of living is the headline of the next slide, and I will say some words about uh, about the costs uh, in Sweden uh, because that could be uh, that's uh, of course very interesting for you to know uh, if you do if you thinking of deciding to go to Sweden uh, and living here. Um, what we can say um, in uh, in general is that the cost of living is is yeah, quite high in Sweden, but not the worst in in uh, in Europe. But more or less, um, we can say that um, the salaries uh, correspond to the costs. Uh, so, uh, uh, but it's worth to note th is that the costs will vary a lot depending on where in Sweden you live. Uh, for example, if you live uh, inside uh, a big city like Stockholm, the costs will be high uh, for rents uh, and for food and, uh, and so on. But if you live in a, uh, on the countryside or in a, a small town or city, uh, the costs will worry and there be uh, more Will be lower than in uh, the bigger cities. Um, in Sweden, no, we are not ready. <laughs> Can you go back? Thank you. Um, in Sweden, we um, love two kind of uh, drinking. We can say uh, we love to drink milk and we love to drink coffee. Uh, I think we, the Swedish people, are one of the most coffee drinkers in the world. I think in Finland uh, they are drinking more coffee than uh, than in Sweden. But then we, we uh, it's Sweden. So coffee is very important uh, to us, as Gloria mentioned earlier. The Swedish fika uh, in the morning and in the afternoon is uh, very important thing of the in a Swedish workplace when you meet other people and drink coffee, but you also drink coffee, I will say, uh, other times in the day. Um, and one kilogram of coffee for the moment, uh, you know, the situation in, in Europe for the moment uh, with inflation uh, or, and all over the world, uh, the, the cost for one kilo of coffee is uh, five to six euro per kilogram for the moment. Uh, something else we like to drink is milk. Uh, it's uh, some kind of national uh, liquid, we can say. We drink a lot of milk. So, uh, but and one liter of milk around 1.5 euros. Uh, if you go outside, uh, it's very common in Sweden that you go outside and eating lunch, then you will pay around 10 to 15 euros for a uh, for a, for a good lunch. Uh, and it, it has increased uh, the last year. We, we can say the, the prices for that. Then. Um, then, if we have a look at uh, what uh, what an apartment will cost, uh, we can say a lot about, about that. But uh, uh, it's the same there. It varies greatly depending on where you are living. But if you we should say something in 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 average, uh, one room an apartment with one room will cost in average for from four hundred and fifty euros per month, but could be much yeah. more expensive yeah. if yeah. you live in the, uh, yeah. in the city of Stockholm. Of course, it could be also be lower if you are living on the on the countryside, but something like uh, like that to to have in mind. Uh, and as you see on the slide here, uh, a two room apartment will uh, be from six hundred and fifty euros per month. Of course, you can buy an apartment um, or a, or a house, uh, and then the costs maybe will be lower than you. 
had to pay maybe uh, one, two or three million uh, Swedish crowns to buy an apartment and then you will have a, a lower monthly rate uh, for it. But then you need to, to invest with, with a lot of money in the beginning. It's also a way to have an uh, apartment uh, in Sweden then. Mm. Mm. Yes, should we go on to the next? Slide. Yes, why go to Sweden then? Yes, I will say uh, why uh, why not? Uh, we think Sweden is a country uh, with a lot of good good opportunities when it comes to work in many different sectors, and um, there is a good balance between work and spare time. Um, Sweden is, uh, I would say, uh, well known uh, for prioritizing quality of life uh, in its labor laws. Uh, workers have many strong rights. Um, Gloria mentioned li a little bit about that earlier. Um, also, the social security system uh, is also very strong. And I will give you, yeah, I will give you some example here. Um, for example, parents of uh, children up to a certain age uh, have the right to work part time. Uh, for example, a right of which many Swedes take advantage uh, of. Parents who miss work in order to take care of a sick child can also receive compensation for lost uh, income. Uh, Sweden has also generous laws for uh, parental leave uh, for new parents and a very well working system for with the kindergartens. That means that we mean that uh, in Sweden we want uh, both the mothers and fathers to be outside in the work life and then we must have a well working system for uh, 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 that somebody will take care of uh, the children. So that's why we have this kindergarten system. And I think it's one of the best in the world, actually. Um, if you want to have more and further information regarding the social benefits in Sweden, uh, you can have a look at the homepage of the social, Swedish Social Insurance Agency. You will see it on the slide here uh, at Forsakringskassan. Dot se, strange name, uh, but there is also a lot of information in other languages. So I think you uh, you can very fast find all the information that you are um, uh, looking for. And there is also something else that we are very proud of in Sweden. That's um, something we call the Allemansrätten. Uh, it is the right of public access to the nature. It means that you are allowed as a person to go everywhere in the nature, uh, even close to where people are living. Maybe you should not put up a tent in a uh, in someone's garden, but very close to you, you are uh, allowed to. And we are proud of our uh, the Swedish nature. We mentioned it also a little bit uh, earlier. Uh, there is a lot of space in our country. Uh, with beautiful views, you can be completely alone if you want uh, and meet uh, uh, Ryan there's uh, Moses uh, and also so sometimes a wolf. Mm -hmm. So could it be? Uh, Anne, so Anne, yes. may, mm -hmm. I, may I add something? Um, yes, of course. Yeah, I was thinking about that education is uh, for free. From uh, from kindergarten to up to university level. Yeah, um, that's yeah. correct. Uh, and uh, for example, in in school and basic uh, in um, uh, in school, uh, children uh, have uh, can eat uh, lunch and meals uh, at school for free. For example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was, That's correct. It was just that. Mm. Yeah. So uh, to sum up this slide, uh, good quality of life, uh, work-life balance, and uh, 
Uh, I will also say that the salaries are uh, not so bad if we compare it to, to many, many other countries. Let's so, move. should we go to this? Yes. Yes. Now Let we have see. got, yes. Now we have got a lot of information from, uh, from me and from Gloria. Uh, and now we will soon go on uh, with uh, our, with more information from our colleagues. Um, uh, regarding job opportunities in different sectors, but we will just show you this picture with uh, contact details to all of us uh, in the different sectors. And I think you will see it soon again in the in the individual presentations. But bef before Gloria and I say goodbye, I think you will, men, you yeah. Gloria, will say something about something called the TMS. Yes, uh, yes. Thank you, Orne. Yes, I would like to uh, to tell you about EORES Target Mobility Scheme Sweden, um, uh, a EU financed pro uh, mobility project uh, that uh, aims to increase mobility in the European Union by matching candidates with employers with a hard to fill vacancies and including EORES mobility services and uh, various financial supports as um, uh, you can apply for example for reimburse for costs with interview trips to another in another country if you get um, a job um, um, contract uh, for at least six months, you can apply for um, uh, reimburse for costs for a relocation for you and your family, uh, for costs with language courses if you need to learn, uh, well, if you need to learn Swedish, for example, uh, we are talking about Sweden, um, and in some professions, uh, we will, you will hear about that later on. Uh, for example, in the health sector, you do need to learn Swedish at a quite high level. And also, you can apply for reimbursement for course uh, with uh, application recognition of qualifications. So, if you are interested to know more about this, um, uh, this, um, these opportunities, you can take a look on uh, the website eurosmobility.sc and uh, you also can contact the Euros advisor in Portugal in order to receive uh, these mobility support services uh, in Portugal. And I think Susanna she, or one of colleagues will yes. write down the email address to contact Eurus in Portugal about yes. this issue. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Gloria. I have mm. TMS at EAFP.pt. Mm. Okay. Well, it was the information, general information about uh, working and living in Sweden. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, please, um, Anders and Rob, they will tell us about the needs for veterinarians in Sweden, please. Yes, and I will also say thank you and I hope to see you soon in Sweden. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gloria and Arne. Uh, I hope you can hear me and that you can see the presentation. Yes, it's perfect. Okay, perfect. So my name is Anders Karlsson Eklund and I work in the veterinary team together with my colleague Rob Flores, who you will hear soon from as well. We're working with the Swedish Public Employment Service, EURES. And as you can see in the presentation, we have a big need of veterinarians in Sweden. According to figures, we have around 350 veterinarians needed in Sweden. One reason is that too few veterinarians are educated in our country. Sweden can offer you as a veterinarian a high standard of animal care and animal health and advanced technology. And we in our veterinary team, we cooperate with Evidencia, which is a global 
um, veterinary care provider that you can find in several countries. In Sweden, they have around 70 clinics. 60 of them are for smaller pets and around 10 of them are for horses. And they are looking for experienced veterinarians uh, from north to south of Sweden. We are cooperating as well with the Districts Veterinärerna, which is a part of the Swedish Board of Agriculture. And they are looking for both newly graduates and experienced veterinarians. And they are mostly looking for these people to work with farm animals and horses. And just recently, we initiated a collaboration with Livsmedelsverket, which is the Swedish food agency. And uh, they are looking for both newly graduates and experienced veterinarians in four different uh, locations in Sweden. And we will help you as a veterinarian to find work in Sweden and we will help you during the process. And the employers as well will help you to relocate to Sweden. So now you will hear more from my colleague Rob Flores about the general requirements and uh, how you do uh, to make contact with us and apply for work as a veterinarian in Sweden. So the floor is yours, Rob. OK, thank you, Anders. Um, we will keep it short. Um, since we have a huge, huge demand of veterinarians nowadays, um, we are struggling a little bit with our, uh, de our demands. Um, but we have some requirements in Sweden, of course. For the first, the most important, you should be legitimized and authorized veterinarian when entering Sweden as a veterinarian. Uh, everyone who's educated in Europe is automatically uh, secure for this legitimation, but you have to apply for it but your future employer will help you with this. Um, we have been talking about it before. Do we need to speak Swedish? Um, at this very moment, Anders and I experienced that employers are quite open if you speak English to start with, but we want you to learn Swedish as soon as possible. Uh, nowadays, they have a rule that one native Swedish speaker should be at the office so you can at least communicate in Swedish uh, with someone at the office. Um, but in the future, you should be learning Swedish as soon as possible. And believe me, it's not impossible language. We have some videos. Uh, we have some advertisements. Uh, I cannot show you them right now here because I do not have that much time. But if I know well, you will receive these sheets if you like to, and then you can click on our videos and on our uh, advertisements we have. And so our uh, request to you is if you are interested uh, to work as a veterinarian, check the video, um, leave your CV uh, at the link which is uh, mentioned here, although you cannot click it on right now, but you can do it at home. And otherwise, there is a small email address vets at arbitsamazing.se you can make a picture of it right now with your telephone or just write it down on a paper and you can send us an email and we will, we will mail to you back as soon as we can. So that was our five minutes about the need of veterinarians to Sweden. Uh, very welcome. If you have any question, ask them now or send us an email and we definitely hope to see you soon in Sweden. I will give the floor to the next presenter. I'm not really sure who it is, but it's healthcare. Good luck. It's Miguel. Thank it's you. Miguel. OK, it's almost <laughs> the same. <laughs> Good luck, you. Miguel. Thank you. So let's see here. I'm going to share my presentation. Uh, for starters, bom dia a todos desde a Suécia. Eu sou Miguel Salvador. And now I will continue in English. So I work at the Swedish Employment Services as a year's advisor. And I'm part of a team dedicated on looking for candidates within the health sector. Uh, the professionals we are looking for are registered nurses, specialist doctors, dentists and physiotherapists who also have an ongoing 
collaboration with Euro and sorry, we also have an ongoing collaboration with Euros Portugal regarding promotion of vacancies for dentists, physiotherapists, and occupational therapists. Those vacancies will be published as they appear based on the employer's delegation and are or will be found at Euros Portugal website. So the employers, uh, well, we work only with employers within the public sector. We also only collaborate with employers uh, who offer support both during the recruitment process and the relocation to Sweden. Miguel, go vidare with the building. I'm not there yet. Oh, I, I'm not sharing? Yes, no, you I'm are. Now everything's working. So everything is working. Thank you. Mm. Uh, so where was I? Um, so we also only collaborate with employers who offer support both during the recruitment process and the relocation to Sweden. So, so the public sector, uh, it's uh, managed by regions. And what is a region? Well, the region is the same as a district in Portugal. And each regions have their own human resources departments. The department are responsible to find candidates to hospitals, uh, dental care and health clinics situated in the regions. Uh, in Sweden, there are 20 regions. Still, we only collaborate with those who provide support. Most of them are situated, as you can see in the map, geographically from the north and down to Gothenburg and Kalmar. So we don't have any collaboration in the south, south of Sweden. So the north, as you can see, uh, in the center of Sweden, uh, Gothenburg and Kalmar. And regarding Gothenburg and Stockholm, I know that many people want to move there. Uh, the collaboration are restricted to two hospitals in Stockholm, the Karolinska Hospital, which is well known internationally, and in Gothenburg, the Salgrenska Hospital, which, by the way, is Swedish biggest hospital. So, so employers uh, we collaborate with offers employment contracts, including language and support through the license process. They provide help on finding accommodation. They also make sure you and your family easily get integrated in your new home. And because of that, good English proficiency is needed to be able to communicate with employers when you just started, uh, but also uh, to, uh, well, to, 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 to be able to live day by day, go buy groceries and, and, and so on. Well, of course, if you don't speak Swedish fluently when you move to Sweden, uh, it's not common, but you never know. Uh, so the next step is that you need a license to, um, to be able to work within these professions. So you need to apply for a license at the National Board of Health and Welfare in Swedish, in Swedish it's called Social Stilson. Or you can also apply for an European professional card called EPC. This goes uh, basically for uh, nurses. Uh, so, so let me show you the National Board of Health. The information are in English and you have the link license to practice. You just follow the instructions. Uh, otherwise, you can also do the same. It's similar with the EPC card. Uh, but the information are on your Europe website. Uh, you just follow the, the, the information here and you can see if you are a nurse, a pharmacist, physiotherapist, mountain guide and a real estate agent, you are able to apply for the EPC card. Uh, my God, so. Uh, and you, well, I advise you to apply as soon you decide you want to work in Sweden. In that way, you get your education validated. So you don't need to speak fluent uh, Swedish to send the first application. Uh, after a while, when you have reached 
uh, level uh, C2, uh, which is required, then you send, you complete the application with with the proof of, of the language uh, to be able to get to get the license. So you need to be motivated to learn Swedish, and you need to have proof of accomplishment of level C2, as I told you. Uh, in Swedish to get the, the, the license. Uh, and you can start learning Swedish online already now. Some of the candidates from Portugal working today in Sweden start learning Swedish through intensive online courses provided by, uh, for instance, Universe, Universidad Nova de Lisboa. And you have the link here. Uh, just let me show you. So. So you have all the information that's also in Portuguese. Uh, and you can also choose to um, to to, uh, to 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 attend a course at Folk University, which is uh, a Swedish uh, uh, organization. And you have all the information here. Uh, you are well, there is a possibility to apply for reimbursement through our mobility scheme, TMS, that uh, we are already informed you about. Uh, but you can also reach or retrieve more information from our colleagues in Portugal. Uh, and finally, uh, I would say that uh, if you would like us uh, to promote your CV among the employers we cooperate with. Please register, uh, send us your CV, use this QR link, and you will get directly to our information page, basically with everything that I've told you now. And down below, you can send the CV depending on the profession that you have. I noticed that there were uh, physiotherapists asking for opportunities on the chat. So here uh, you have the information, you have the links also, you have information about TMS, uh, the mobility scheme. You have a short movie about living and working in Sweden. So you have everything and down below you just apply. So, said that, muito obrigado pelo interesse demonstrado e por terem participado neste encontro. And now, I give the word to my colleague, Peter Hall. Hello to you all. I will just find my presentation here so we can start inform you about the need for doctors and teachers. As Miguel told us, and I will tell you about the need for preschool teachers and teachers. I hope you can see my. Yes, it's working. It's working very fine. We are two Euros advisor, me and Laura Feller, who's working on a national level with the recruitment for teachers. We work in most, most many municipalities in different regions. For the moment, it's more in the north and on the Gotland, the isle in the Baltic Sea. We, we cooperate with, with the municipalities relocation support, HR, to support the incoming teacher and preschool teachers. Preschool or kindergarten? They are many times owned by the municipality, as well there are private. The, the age is between one to six. It's not mandatory to send your children to preschool or kindergarten, but most parents do. And all children are, they have the right to enjoy 15 hours a week. And also the schools are obliged to following the curriculum it's a document established by the government where goals, values, and core assignments is ruled. And they, it's important that the schools are following this. From the age of six, the, the year they become six, school is compulsory. Primary school in Sweden is nine years. And it's divided into three 
years in three parts. It's the, it's the first three years is called in Swedish a lågstadiet, and then comes the middle stage, and then they have some senior years. And when they are about 15 to 16 years old, they finish the compulsory school. And then they choose the gymnasium. Most of the students are choosing gymnasium and they have all sorts of program. Our need is in the, as I told you before, the preschool teacher and also the school teacher in the primary school. I will just show you a little bit about the salary uh, between, and you have to divide it between 10 and 11 to euro, because otherwise it will be many, many uh, higher if it was in euro. Teacher preschool between 28,000 to 33,000. Teacher primary school 31,000 to 36,000. And also I show you a little bit about the statistics, the need, the coming need for the, the, the some years and also in 10 years time. So that's, as you can see, there's a big, there's a challenge and there is a big need, education and language. Teaching is a profession, you need a license. And if you not have the, the full license, you can have contract for one to three years, but you will not have a temporary contract. The Swedish UHR, University and Högskola Råd, is a governmental agency responsible for recognition of, of foreign education. And also, the Swedish Skolverket is a national agency for education and is the central administration authority for the public school system. They issue diplomas or certification to teachers and preschool teachers with a foreign degree. Minimum level C1 on the reference scale, but we are interested to have contact with you individually if you are on the level B2, for example. And the, the license to teach is in Skolverket and UHR. That's the most important links you need to form the validation and the certificate. There are four steps. Let's start with, they register and reviews your application. The second step will be, evaluates your foreign education. The third step is make an overall assessment. And the last, the fourth, fourth step will be education decide on certification. And it's all taken care of by School Racket, as I told you before, and you arch are. In. I show you the picture on the home, home, home site for Swedish Council for Higher Education. And then I also show you a map of Sweden, as you have already seen several maps, and my map is where the, the big, for the moment, the biggest needs are. It's in the, in the north. Kiruna is famous for the big mines and it's an, in a little bit mine industrial booming city for the moment. A little bit south, you have also a smaller minor city, uh, which is also booming a little bit. And when we come to Dalane, where in the middle of Sweden, where there is also shortages for especially um, preschool teacher. And as I told you before, the, the island in the Baltic Sea, uh, Gotland, where they have a huge demand for um, preschool teachers. It's not so far. It takes about 40 minutes to fly or three to five hours, depending on what kind of ferry you, you, you prefer coming to Stockholm, for example, the capital. So it's not that far. And it's also a very beautiful island. Lots of historical finds from the Viking Age. Please contact us through Recruto. We have adverts for teachers in Portugal, and we also hope you could send your CV and application to us through that one. And don't, we don't, shouldn't forget the language course in Lisbon. 
we, there is an ongoing cooperation with Ilnova in Lisbon. I know uh, Gloria has mentioned it before, Sueco Innova. And then, of course, the Target Mobility Scheme, GMS, which we already have given you information about. And also, I would like to add the last thing that please contact us, even if we hope we, Laura and I, we are sure that we can handle the, your individual questions and demand and give you good answers back. So thank you from me and I let you, I pass the word. Goodbye. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Jeanette here. Uh, I will talk to you about the hospitality sector. And now let me show you my presentation. There we go. Uh, so I will just get right at, right at it. We are looking for cooks and chefs, waiters, waitresses and bartenders mainly. So uh, some words about our employers. Mostly they are small or medium sized. Uh, often the owners are themselves working within the business. Could also be a family business. Uh, they take very good care of their professionals from other countries, I can assure you, because uh, we see you chefs now like uh, football players. You can kind of choose where you would like to work and where you would like to go. Maybe the salary is not that high, but anyway. Uh, there is a good uh, work environment, as we've heard before. And as uh, my colleagues also talked about, it's non-hierarchic at the first name basis. But first name you can use to anyone but the king. Uh, so uh, we have companies all over Sweden from south to north. And um, most common is summer season at the coasts and the countryside. And for the winter season, it's ski resorts up north. Uh, and the requirements, just quickly, is the vocational training for cooks and chefs, of course. And English is super important. And that is because you need to be able to communicate, of course, with your colleagues in the kitchen. You know, when it gets, gets a little bit stressful, uh, there need not to be any uh, mistakes made or uh, misunderstandings. And for those working in the restaurant or in the bar, of course, you need very good English skills since a lot of the customers will be Swedish speakers. So none of you is really talking in your own mother tongue. So then you need to be quite, you know, comfortable with English. And also it's very important with the experience if you're a waiter or a waitress or a bartender because to uh, concentrate on two things, not knowing the profession and not knowing English and you're not talking your mother tongue, that could be really exhausting and not a very pleasant uh, situation to be in. So we say three plus years experience, both for kitchen and restaurant could be good. More is also fine. And you will of course have an introduction, <clears throat> sorry, uh, but there will be no time for uh, your colleagues to teach you the profession. So I can say that you could you could come for a, a seasonal job for some months. You can come for for a longer period of time or stay for life. And we know that there is a big demand, a big, big demand. And not only in Sweden, all over Europe, there is a demand. We know that. But uh, still, uh, we would like to give you this information for those of you that would like to come for a period of time, because then when you come back, you have new experience, you have worked with new way to plate and put the food, present the food and everything. Uh, most of our employers, they use uh, locally produced uh, products and also uh, um, everything is very fresh. So what is the next step? Well, you really need to, uh, let me see, I didn't hear anyone say something about my, oh, 
now my presentation is gone. OK, here it come back again, right? Yes, yes. Thanks. <laughs> So, mind the time, please. We are yes, yes, getting I'm, to the end. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. You. I'm still finished. I'm soon finished. So, what you need to do now is to send your cover letter in English to chefs at arbetsförmedling.se. Uh, Euros advisors in Sweden will match you with suitable employers. So, please get in contact with us, even if you're just interested. Maybe you're interested in coming for winter or next year, let's say. So you need to decide if you want to go to the city or countryside. And please remember, it could be at the end of the road, really, because we're a big country, only 10 million people. So we're not crowded. So important to inform us about what you prefer and I'll ask for guidance if you don't know. So accommodation, usually employer will provide you and offer accommodation at low cost. Could be staff accommodation, could be shared apartment or maybe your own apartment, but you need to talk about this beforehand. Salary is monthly, and according to Swedish collective agreements, we have heard everything about this. Based on training and experience, of course, extra for inconvenient hours and 12% holiday pay. And in April, the agreements will be updated. But for now, if you have six years of experience, it's from 15 euros an hour. And here I just wanted to show you a couple of examples for chefs. Um, it's uh, small places, as I said, very nice, usually close to the water and the sea. And for waiters and bartenders also wanted. And we have some very good opportunities. And last but not least, here is the winter scene and our web address. OK. That's all for me. Thank you very much. So I'll quickly take over here. OK. Go, 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 Annika. Go. And I, I, know, I know about the time schedule, so I'll, I'll go straight ahead. My name is Annika. I'll talk about engineering. We need engineers for Sweden. I suppose you've heard that already. Because we, we it, it, there's been some talk about uh, about northern Sweden where I'm situated. It's snowing right now, by the way, but that's not the 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 theme of today. Today is engineering. So what we need, I have made we we've made a compilation. We're four people working in this in this team, engineering team, and we made this presentation together. And it's a compilation of photos and job opportunities. So I'll. Go. And you can see the map, you've seen it already. It's very much about forest, wood, paper up in the north. It's also steel, it's mining, it's water, wind, and sun. And we have we have the uh, the minerals in the ground. When it comes to automotive, we're going south. For instance, to Gothenburg in the west or in, in Södertälje, just south of Stockholm. I'll begin with El Coabe. That's the state mine of Sweden, and that's also the biggest mining company of Sweden. It's placed in Kiruna. I suppose you've heard of Kiruna. Because, because of the mine and cracks in, in the ground, they had to move half the city of Kiruna, and they're doing that right now. It's it's very exciting, and this is far north. It, it's it's above the Arctic Circle. And uh, El Coabe often take part in our European job days, job fairs. And uh, you can start working there in English. And you will find links to each company's vacancies in every slide here. So I'll just move on and go to the next mine. And this one is Sweden's newest mine. And it's an open mine. It's in Pajala, also far up north. It's close. Uh, it's close to Santa Claus land in 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 Finland. If you've heard about that, and they also need people, lo lots of machine drivers and people driving diggers and so on. And these two mines ma mainly uh, dig for ore. We have something really new. It's H2 green steel. 
it's beside Luleå also in the north, but, but below the Arctic Circle this time. And they will ma be making green steel. So this is really new. Uh, and and uh, there are, they are building right now, but the, there are vacancies already. So if you're interested in, in producing green steel, then take a look at H2. Then we come to Northwalt. This is close to my region where I live. And this is green batteries. So it's the same, it's minerals from the mines in the north and from other countries because they do have to import some. But they make green batteries. The factory is enormous. It's so big that they had to, when they built it, they had to, to compensate five, with five centimeters at each corner because of the curvation of the earth. That's how big it is. It's like a normal Swedish village. And they are hiring a lot right now. And it's it's all categories, all positions in engineering. And they need operators. Right now, the demand for, for operators is about 300 people. And it's quite urgent. They, they And they have all their positions at this site, Career Northvolt. But if you are interested in, in automation, or working as an operator, I have a direct link that you don't have to apply via the website. You can you can you can apply direct. So if anybody's interested, my my email will come last, and you can email me and ask for that. Then we go south to to Volvo Group, and this is for Volvo cars, and and you they need people within, within automotive. And they also take internships and traineeships. And by the way, that's also the case with Northwold. So, so if you're interested in an internship, there's a possibility. Uh, from metals and cars to something totally different, nuclear waste. So what, what's the leftovers from, from the nuclear power plants? Stutzvik are refining it and reusing it. I, I don't know about the process. I'm not into this. I'm, I'm not an engineer, but I know it's interesting and I know there's a, there are job opportunities. So if you have any interest or or experience in, in nuclear, then join Stutzvik. And they're placed in middle of Sweden in New Chirping. It's, it's a little southwest of Stockholm. Tyrians, one of the big infrastructure company, consultancy companies in Sweden, they also recruit in English. And many of these use English as working language. And Northvolt, I forget to mention that, they only use English as a working language, which is a great possibility for for to, to move and start working immediately and then of course learn Swedish meanwhile. So this is my last slide and it's the last slide of the whole presentation of Eures Sweden. We in the, the engineering group we use the digital tool Recruto. You can sign up, we send you information and we invite you to a voluntary workshop. If you would like to 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 join the workshop we'll talk more about engineering and living and working in Sweden and job opportunities. So thanks a lot, people. Thank you. Thank you so much to all the colleagues that participated in this presentation. Um, I'm going to give permission to all participants um, to use microphones and cameras if you want to. I know it's a, a little bit late, but if you still want to raise questions besides the ones you already um, have put in the in the chat, um, Eris Portugal team and the um, Eris Sweden team will be available to answer you. Please raise your hand or write on the chat. We have Federico asking, oh. can I live in Sweden as a job seeker without personal number? Well, it's quite complicated. Uh, life is quite complicated without uh, a personal number, uh, the Swedish identity number. But uh, I will say, 
yeah, it's quite complicated. You don't you don't have access to any of the society service, for example. Uh, but um, uh, you can say that as an um, EU citizen, you have the right to be in Sweden as a job seeker for a max of six months. But without the, 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 this identity number, it's quite difficult to access to service from society. But uh, you may register as a job seeker with our, uh, with the, in the public employment services. And um, in that case, you will be issued with a temporary identity number. But still, it doesn't give you access to many of the society services. Okay, uh, there's a specific question about the opportunities in the field of urban planning. I don't know if you prefer the, uh, the person to write to you directly or if you um, want to answer now, since it's so, we, so specific. Well, we, we, we can answer quite, uh, it's like the, we, we don't have any cooperation regarding this kind of, uh, of uh, job offers. So that means, well, the, so we, we, don't, we are, don't have an so much knowledge about the specific sector. So I would recommend that you take a look either on the um, ERES portal for uh, eventual job offers in English or on the Swedish job bank. And uh, as I told you earlier, you can translate your specific keywords for your field into Swedish and take a look there uh, for job offers that may match your skills. There is a need of architects and planning planning developers, but there's so much included with the national regulation. So it's first of all, you need very good Swedish, I guess, and also the knowledge of the national regulation for construction, for planning and, and also for what the community advice. But um, you can all send, also as Gloria told us, told you, you can always send questions about it to us. But that's a little bit. Thank you. I, I would say that Sweden pretty much needs almost everything. The mm -hmm. difference is between jobs not requiring speaking Swedish, jobs or employers that we have an agreement that they actually uh, support you when you are applying for a job. They they help you with your family and so on. And the majority of the jobs, the vacancies available at our employment services portal, in the last case, you actually need to speak Swedish. And that the minimum is, I would say, level B, B2. But for the jobs that we have been presenting here, these are jobs that we have a cooperation with employers and employers are actively looking for candidates from Europe. But said that, yes, we, knew, we need pretty much everything. But in that case, you have to look for the job through the uh, Employment Services webpage in Sweden. I send the, the link on the chat or through the Euros portal and be prepared that you need to learn Swedish and speak at least at the B level to be able to apply. Okay, thank you, Miguel. Someone was asking about the possibility of opportunities for teacher assistant for special needs children there are or there are also we need teacher for specialized in uh, so special needs yes and okay. it, it so could be physical uh, disadvantages or sick sick speak sorry for the <laughs> um, both sides physical and sick sick I can't say it, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but I guess you understand. <laughs> yeah, so we should yeah. use the, the contacts that you provided during yes, your presentation. Please. And yes. yeah, yes, and yes. send the well, cover letter and CV. To, uh, to, to send us your questions. Another question about the need for web, web developers and what qualifications would be considered for such a position? Yes, th that was me that place to question. Um, so basically, um, unfortunately, I'm not exactly qualified by the European certification, but I did take a course that's certified by uh, the GERD. I don't know. I, I believe that those qualifications do not get transferred uh, within the European Union. Would such a qualification be enough well, to apply for a position in web development in Sweden or um, 
is something that the employers would not uh, consider, uh, given that there are, of course, people that have a degree in engineering and, and so on. I believe I will clarify this because for Sweden people, maybe you don't know what, what is the level that uh, okay. the candidate is talking about. It's not in middle between 12 years old and uh, graduate is in the middle of this. This is a specific vocational training, I would say. That's why it's not uh, graduate people, I would say. Yes, and and that is uh, something that probably won't be uh, considered in the, in this case. I, I'm just asking because I I did not have unfortunately the possibility to well to continue with uh, a higher education. Well, the degrees that I have and both me and my wife are only this sort of vocational courses, but they are not exactly converted to the European Union's countries, and th that's why I had the question. And I also have a secondary question: Is it possible? if we work in Sweden to uh, resume our studies and to, uh, well, seek for a, a better education? Or is it something that uh, later on in life it's not really possible to resume? Shall I answer? Well, uh, if you move to Sweden and you get uh, registered as living in Sweden, Yes, there is the possibilities of attending uh, vocational courses and uh, even uh, university studies. Yes, there are conditions to, to, to fulfill. For example, for specific courses, you need to have uh, maybe have some knowledge, specific knowledge in order to, to be able to be start these courses. But uh, but yes, there there are possibilities, and as a living in Sweden, you will be able to to apply to to this course. Okay, thank you. Th those were my my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also, I I would like to 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 answer the question presented by Lou, um, because I have been reading a lot of questions regarding taxes in Sweden. I'm not sure uh, if uh, we are still famous about our heavy taxes, and I think it's wise actually to say a few words here. Basically, most of the people earn less than 4,600, 4,700 euros per month. The medium range of the salaries is 3,300 euros, and we are talking gross salary, so, which means that uh, most of the people pays only uh, uh, city tax. And how high the taxes is depends on where you live. So, I mean, I live in the southern of Sweden, just to give you an example, uh, in a city called Lund. 20 kilometers from my city, there are another city, it's called Malmö. I pay at table 31, and Malmö pays table 30. And what does it mean? Well, it means is it means that when I have the salary, 4,600 euros, then I will pay 31%. But if I have less than that, say that I have only 2,000 euros or 2,500 euros, then I'm not going to pay 31%. I pay less. I pay, I think, around 25, 26%. Um, so, so this is the the city tax, and it's it's only tax that I need to pay because I don't have a high, super high salary. I have a normal salary, but those who have higher salary, like the doctors, for instance, uh, the medical doctors, they perhaps have uh, six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand euros. Well, then they will pay the state tax, and it will it will be ten percent more. I think it's up to sixty five thousand to 6,500 euros, sorry. And this is the difference between 4,700 and 5,500. Then I will pay 10% more. If I have more than that, then I will pay 20% more. But it's very complicated. But at the end, this and it also shows, uh, because I also have the question, what is the lowest salary in Sweden? It's very difficult to say. What, what it is, because uh, if you are working as a as a, a shop assistant, uh, and at the same time you 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 um, you, you you check how much uh, a nurse, for instance, or a, well, a nurse or a do or, or or a teacher earns, uh, the shop assistant perhaps earns around two thousand seven hundred, two thousand eight hundred gross per month. Uh, 
and and the teacher earns perhaps around three thousand seven hundred a month, uh, and the nurse around the same. But after the taxes, the 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 salary they are quite similar actually. Uh, it differs perhaps a couple of hundred of euros, three, four, five, six hundred. Uh, so, so that's why we have such a difficulty to say <laughs> what is the lowest salary and, and and how much taxes do you pay because the salary at the end they are quite similar to each other. I hope I hope it's specified. It, it explains the situation about salaries contra um, co contra 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 uh, taxes. Thank you, Miguel. Yeah, it's quite complicated. It's not an easy subject. Um, just a few more questions here in the chat. Someone was asking, um, and we already discussed this, but um, is it free to learn Swedish? Um, I think, Gloria, you, you mentioned this just uh, to refresh. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you, yes, if, if as a EU citizen, you have the, the right to access uh, free courses in Swedish, uh, Swedish for immigrants, uh, which are administrated by each municipality in all Sweden. Some municipalities, we got to know, they demand that you at least have uh, the temporary identity number, uh, coordination number called in. But uh, actually, there are also municipalities that don't uh, demand this coordination number. For example, here in Uppsala. So uh, moving to okay. Sweden as a EU citizen, you can, you have the opportunity to attend these free courses in Swedish. Yes. Okay. Now regarding specific uh, uh, occupational areas, um, I don't know if you, the answer is the same, so okay. I, I will just uh, mention uh, someone asked about real estate or assets management area, and another person mentioned uh, mediator for conflicts. If if you study law, if there is opportunity for um, mediation of conflict, it's very specific areas. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. You don't have any uh, direct uh, knowledge no, of opportunities give, in this occupation. Yes. No, it's difficult to give you a qualified answer. Uh, yeah, regarding because we don't really work with these work with. professions. Yes. Once more, I would recommend take a look on the job bank using uh, keywords specific for your qualifications and experience. And, and, you, and you, I will complete it that you probably will need to speak Swedish. So, yeah. Uh, you have yeah, to learn Swedish to to be able to to yeah, work. Yeah, because uh, and you you should you should remember also think about that in these fields where there is not um, uh, a high demand uh, or a shortages, uh, you will be in competing with the national candidates who already speak Swedish, who already have. Um, uh, a house and uh, the, the Swedish identity number, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's it's uh, it's quite tough uh, in this in these areas in these professions if you uh, if you don't speak Swedish from the beginning. Yeah. May I may I also say something? Yes. Uh, about this, that there are certain institute. I think they're mostly in Stockholm, so you have to find out there the organization and institute and, and check with the homepage. They might have maybe six month uh, okay. project going on that they might uh, mm -hmm. that you could uh, at least apply for. Okay. But I don't. I'm, I'm not. I don't have the full list for these kind of institute or organization. But it it, it could be worth. To try to find out more information. Thank you. Yes, so I believe we can maybe close the question and answers now. Our meeting is almost may, two hours long. Uh, yes, may, Gloria. May, 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 I don't know, Igor, are you are you still with us? You had a question regarding specialist doctor in Sweden. Igor is still with us. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, um, regarding this, we do um, have most of the regions we, uh, the, the employers we collaborate with, are looking for specialist doctors, 
And uh, as I as I wrote, they, it depends a little bit of the relocation package they 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 offer. But um, I know one region, for example, that uh, that offers the Swedish language course from the beginning. Uh, otherwise, most of the regions demand that you learn Swedish uh, in your home country up to B2 level. But the, there is this region, and uh, they can help with the uh, help with the um, uh, house and um, and all the formalities when you move to Sweden and. Uh, and so on, and, and, and they pay you a education salary during the time you learn Swedish. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a, until you get your license. Okay, thank you. And Just also, before also closing. So on. Uh, uh, I have a last question here for Miguel Dries, and I think it's a good, very good question for the Portuguese team. I think it's me. Yes, and I was going to talk How about that. Yes. To learn the Swedish. Yeah. Well, um, my, my own experience was it, it took around eight months to get from zero to B2. So it's not super difficult. I know it, it, when you hear us speaking in Swedish, it, it, you, you, you have like this idea about the, the Muppet Show chef cook, you know. But, but, but the thing is, uh, most of our vocabulary is a mix of um, the English and and um, and also Germanic uh, and a lot of Latin words. So uh, actually, after a while, you start understanding very quickly, and it's a very very easy grammatic, especially in comparison with the Portuguese grammatic. So uh, and we have a very good uh, cooperation with Ilnova. Uh, yeah. The classes are very. Um, uh, or oriented for the personal advice. Um, the professor that has been working with us has been doing it for a long time. Carmen has been, um, yeah, if you want to May give I, your approach, yes, yeah. Carmen, please. May I say that uh, Miguel and uh, Gloria are the background of them. They are Portuguese in the background, so they learn, but they are living there for a long time. But for those who are being in the process recruiting pharmacists, hygienists, dentists, uh, other professions, they, they have to get the, the C1. Uh, all the people, they reach the level. Uh, of course, some people get a little bit more difficult in some issues, another one in another. But also we had people with families little kids and they managed to learn uh, during the time that Ilnova has the course. There was in the beginning they were on-site training, but nowadays they are on learning, uh, on, on, sorry, online, online, learning. online learning. And the, the issue is people reach it because they are focused, they are really looking for it and they work daily for not only the lessons, but they get some time from themselves to have their exercise and listen podcasts, listen to the, the TV channels that is very basic, is for foreign people. So listen music, they approach. I, I didn't manage to learn Swedish so well because I'm not moving to Sweden and I'm <laughs> but I know the basic because I've been in in touch in touch with the colleagues and also with the candidates but those who really want to move to Sweden it's possible but they have to work hard on it they have to put in the daily schedule to learn Swedish as you you sleep mm. and drink and <laughs> eat like this. Like any other so language. So it's yeah. possible, and uh, and I believe that you will enjoy it because those who learned, they feel very proud of it, as I can say. Yes, I think we should really close the session for now. Uh, we have uh, given you our um, contacts, some useful sites. I will say again that you will be receiving the presentation. All the um, uh, links will be clickable, so you will be able to access all the information that you heard today and all the contact information that was given. Also, the recording of this session will be made available in our YouTube channel from Ares Portugal and we'll 
will be sent to you to your email to the email uh, that you used on your registration okay so thank you again to the swedish team for your time for for your uh, kindness and for uh, being able to stay a little bit longer and answer all our questions okay thank you for the wonderful collaboration also thank you for the um, iris portugal team that was here to help you andrea was very uh, working hard in the chat so thank you for that andrea um and for me i hope to see you again in the new webinar um and uh, have a nice day Bye -bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.